Good morning, everyone. I'm Nathan Warnock. I'm Andrea Warnock. And you're tuned in to Thursday Thursday. This is a show that we do where we just dig into the Word of God every Thursday. We take a passage of Scripture, we study it, we read it, we give you some context on the background of that Scripture, give you a little bit of application on what the Lord's given us as we've thought about that passage of Scripture and share that with you. Um, Not so that you can take our word for it, but hopefully it encourages you to get into that passage of Scripture yourself, kind of cut it up yourself, dig into it at a deeper level, take that before the Lord and see what the Holy Spirit has for you. And that's the great part, is your application will be different from our application, right? We believe the Bible has one interpretation and many applications, Mm -hmm. depending on our life circumstances as the Holy Spirit moves in your life. So this month we've been taking a look at Matthew 19. We looked at Matthew 19 verses 1 through 3 in week 1. Then last week we looked at verses 4 through 6. This week we're going to take a look at verses 7 and 8. So let me read those and Andrea will give some background. Matthew 19 verse 7 says, They said to him, Why then did Moses command one to give a certificate of divorce and to send her away? He said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. All right, some background to these two verses. So a little bit of what we talked about in the two previous weeks is Jesus was kind of cornered by these Pharisees who were wanting wanting an answer from Jesus. There are two schools of thought at the time. One was headed up by a rabbi who thought you should be able to divorce your wife really for mostly any reason. And another school of thought headed up by a rabbi who who believed you could only divorce if there was unfaithfulness. So then these Pharisees are trying to say, all right, which side are you going to choose, Jesus? And Jesus then goes to really talk to talk about marriage, and he, and he doesn't talk about divorce at first. He talks about marriage and what God set that up to be. So he, in verses 4 through 6, just quote scripture really about mm-hmm. what marriage is. Mm-hmm. So then in seven and eight, he, he gets into a, a divorce and, and what he's saying is I never set up divorce. Divorce was never a, you know, a, a thing for me. So <clears throat> he's talking about Moses. Well, how does Moses, what does Moses have to do with this? Back in Deuteronomy, Moses set up laws for divorce and and so you can go back to Deuteronomy 24, verses 1 through 4, and Moses is giving laws for divorce and remarriage. And he's doing that because there were no certificates of divorce or laws of divorce prior to that. So peop- the Israelites were divorcing. They were separating. But then the woman was left vulnerable because really she was just sent away. She mm-hmm. wasn't able to remarry, which when back back in those days when a woman was... Uh, you know, when she was um, widowed separated, or... widowed, whatever, she, she was fending for herself and and really kind of an outcast right. of of the community. And so it was very hard for her to have a livelihood and to and to care for herself. And if there were children involved, to be able to care for her children. So right. what was happening is these husbands were sending you know we're throwing out their wives but with no no divorce law or certificate of divorce so they were really left vulnerable and their children as well did you want to say something no that's great okay. really and then and then um so that's how moses has that's what moses has to do with this part of the scripture and he's saying you know but from the beginning it was not so and that's not the way that's not the way god had intended for marriage to be he never intended for there to ever be divorce and remarriage due to divorce. So right. he's saying that Moses was the one that allowed for that in order to protect uh, women, really. So then I'll let you all throw it over to you and you can maybe dig into that a little bit more and talk about some application. No, thanks, babe. That, that was great. Um, yeah, so let's start with Moses. So... I guess maybe we maybe we jumped over, you know, you may be watching this video and going, who's Moses, right? Mm. Jesus, I know. Um, but Moses was the individual that the Lord chose to lead the Israelite people out of 
slavery in Egypt. So the Israelites spent about 400 years in slavery in Egypt Mm -hmm. to the Egyptians. And during that time, the Lord really established them as his people. It was really a very interesting part in Israelite history. If you go back and read in Exodus, end of Genesis and Exodus, where the Lord really puts them in a place where they're allowed to grow as a people group. I mean, they grow from Mm -hmm. essentially one family of a father and 12 sons to roughly a million people. And they're allowed to grow in Egypt. And the Egyptian people at the time were so racist towards the Israelite people that they wanted nothing to do with them. I mean, they didn't try and intermix with them as far as romantically. They didn't try and get them into Egyptian culture. They just shoved the Israelites down in Goshen, which was a part of Egypt, and let them go. And eventually they grew to such a large number that the Egyptians were going, uh, we can't be having Mm -hmm. this huge number of people. They're going to rebel. And so they enslaved them. And, And really... A lot of Egyptian culture was built on the back of backs of Israelite slaves. So the Lord miraculously, I encourage you to go read it in Exodus. The Lord miraculously raises up Moses, actually from even within the palace walls of Egypt, and ultimately, through a set of circumstances, he pursues Moses' heart. Moses leads the Israelite people out of Egypt through some crazy miraculous circumstances, and then. Moses actually receives the law from the Lord in the form of the Ten Commandments Mm -hmm. that you've probably heard of. And then beyond that, the Lord set up a number of other rules and regulations. But also Moses set up a number of rules and regulations just as as far as civil life, right? How's life? You know, it takes a lot to manage a million people. (laughs) What's that going to look like? And so... You are exactly right. He looked down and thought, well, these women are being left uncared for. That isn't right. And so he created this writ of divorce that a husband could give. But I want to to have you look at something. I'm going to read two passages, and I just want you to think about it. Verse 7, when the Pharisees respond to Jesus, so in verse 6, the Lord had, had quoted Scripture, and he says, So they, meaning a husband and wife, are no longer two but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. The Pharisees respond to him, and look what they say. Why then did Moses command one to give a certificate of divorce and to send her away? Why did Moses tell them they should do that? Let me read you what it actually says. Mm -hmm. So when you flip back over to Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 1, it says, When a man takes a wife and marries her, If she then finds no favor in his eyes because he has found some indecency in her. That word indecency, look into that word because it's important. It's specific. It doesn't mean like she burned my soup or man, she looks like a wreck first thing in the morning. It doesn't mean any of that. It means specifically sexually indecency and generally specifically meant she wasn't a virgin Mm -hmm. at the time that you married her. So, it says, when a man takes a wife and marries her, if she then finds no favor in his eyes because he has found some indecency in her, and he writes her a certificate of divorce and puts it in her hand and sends her out of his house, and she departs from his house, if she goes and becomes another man's wife, and it goes on from there. Right? But the point I wanted you to think about is, does that sound like what Moses was saying is a command? Hey, husband, you should give a writ of divorce and send her out. Because that's what the Pharisees were saying. If you go back and look at 7, why did Moses command one to give a certificate of divorce and send her away? Well, for one thing, he didn't. And praise the Lord that Jesus was way more mature than I am, because I'd have probably blasted him right there for that. for that. Because they've completely recharacterized Moses as a guy that just wanted divorce here, there, and everywhere. <clears throat> and then Jesus does respond to him, and he says... Because of, and this is the biggest thing in this section for me application-wise, because of your hardness of heart, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives, 
but from the beginning it was not so. He goes right back to the beginning. Mm-hmm. Right? Jesus keeps refocusing. They keep wanting to change the argument. Well, yeah, but Moses said. Right, but from the beginning. Well, but Moses did this thing. But from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Right? Marriage is an institution that predates sin. Probably the only institution that exists in 2020 that predates sin so shouldn't we be going back to the beginning to see what marriage was designed to be guys jesus didn't god and then ultimately jesus and matthew did not give any exception for divorce from the beginning it's god's clear design that we take marriage absolutely at the highest seriousness and that when we make that commitment there's no turning back for any reason period right that doesn't mean next week that we're not going to talk about when jesus sets out an exception but again i want to just redirect you to from the beginning it was not so Mm -hmm. and let us be husbands and wives that set out to have a marriage that is reflective of God's design and gives glory to God in the way he designed marriage to be from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Any thoughts on that, babe? No, oh, that's great. That? Yep, that's great. Awesome, guys. Hey, take a look at uh, 7 and 8 for yourselves. Give us, a, give us some thoughts in the comments below. If you have thoughts about, hey, this is what really struck me as I read that, or if you have application, right? If you're not comfortable sharing it publicly, shoot us an email and just let us know, hey, this is the application that the Holy Spirit really gave me. It, it so encourages us to hear what the Holy Spirit does in other people's lives yep. as well as we get in His Word together and seek His wisdom for our marriages. So thanks so much, guys, for joining us. Have a great Thursday. Tomorrow we're going to do Family Friday. We're going to keep talking about the stages of parenting. Love to have you for that. We'll write in the diary on Saturday, and then we'll be back for uh, several fifth-week shows. Uh, this is coming up here in a couple weeks. So yep. thanks so much, guys, for joining us. Have a great day. Hey, thanks for joining us on Marriage by Design. If you were impacted by this video, like it by hitting the thumbs up below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. And once you subscribe, hit the bell icon so you can be notified when new episodes release. Excellent. Also, one of the huge pillars of our show is interactivity between us and you. So we would love you to comment down in the comments below if you have thoughts about this video or if you have questions or other things you'd like to like to see considered in the future. In addition, if you'd like, you can email us. That's marriagebydesignpodcast at gmail.com. We're also on Instagram at marriagebydesignpodcast or you can find us on Facebook by searching Marriage by Design Podcast. Finally, if you want to, you can tweet at us. We do have a Twitter account. That is at MarriageXDesign. Thanks, and have a great day.